so what is shift right performance testing um you might have seen that traditionally whenever we are involved in any sdlc life cycle uh testing pretty much comes at the end of the development cycle uh once mm -hmm. the development is completed all the components that is ready integration tested that's when we actually go and do testing and even the last part of the testing phase is where the performance testing happens just before we release the product into the production um shift left uh, is the first concept where we actually start doing performance testing early in the game and start giving some meaningful um feedback on the tuning opportunities uh, we i have done a session on shift left performance testing also and uh, elaborated on the tools we can use uh, specifically on the lighthouse tool if you have not seen that please go ahead and uh, watch that webinar it's also there in our youtube account um so today we are focusing more on the shift right testing so traditionally when the uh, product is released into the production uh, it is assumed that it's it's pretty much on god's hand so whatever happens we have to monitor there and uh, if there are any issues we have to replicate that in a lower environment and then try to come up with the fixes and uh, release that into production again um but it is also possible for us to go a little right into the stlc life cycle and start doing some performance testing there so that we can build more confidence on it um so the the concept of doing performance testing uh, in production uh in a very controlled environment in a very controlled setting um so testing in production as a concept is also widely known as tip and uh, there are some other concepts of doing performance testing or testing in general um in production uh there is a to b testing there is a chaos testing there is a vulnerability uh testing and so on but today we're going to talk more about how we can do performance testing as a practice uh in production that will be a core focus on this session and the main reason for doing this testing uh is to identify any issues earlier in the process uh before it becomes evident for the end user before it becomes too big to handle so that we are well prepared ahead of time um so let's move on to the next slide so you might be wondering why we really have to do shift right performance testing so we have already tested the application in lower environment we have already certified it we don't see any performance issues it's ready to go into production so why do i really have to do something in production where it is difficult to simulate the condition and also it is not most preferred method um if that is the case if performance testing is done right and if your system is so resilient why would you see something like this in reality right uh, these these are a couple of examples where amazon um our target walmart and game day for example where we have seen um the infrastructure has completely crashed it has gone down um the user behavior is not able to be replicated uh in the lower environment well so this could this could be the reason they did not anticipate this much load but also the performance of the systems are not uh very well managed or uh, the disaster scenarios are not really tested well um so these are all the situations what we are trying to avoid to give you much more insight and reasoning shift right performance testing needs to be done for a couple of reasons uh very first pointer is to build a stakeholders confidence um because the entire company reputation the for the the revenue functionality everything is dependent on uh, how it is performing in the real time how it is performing in production so stakeholders confidence do come from it any incident for any company like uh, uh, the crap the servers went down it crashed couldn't handle the load it's all negative publicity and it will reflect on the customer satisfaction it will reflect on the company share price revenue reputations so they really want to make sure the stakeholders are um, confident in their application in the system so doing a performance testing in production is one way of ensuring that we are prepared in the actual environment and uh, we are good to go the second strong reason is to accurately load test them so no matter how good you try to do that in a lower environment the accuracy always differs because you won't be simulating um, each and every functionality or 
you won't be able to account for the changes the uh, the end user goes through in the real scenarios and again production data combinations always differs from the test environment um, test environment it's much more controlled we create the test data or we might have some level of production data which is uh, available and uh, it, it can be reused in a lower environment to simulate much more realistic data combinations but beyond that by the time the in reality the the actual data would be would have evolved uh, which would be much more different so the the existing of data which is much more complex more more have a lot of combinations it cannot be simulated one on one in the lower environment that is the major reason why we want to be in the actual environment and test them and uh, one other uh, reason is integrating uh, with a third party application right so when you test in a lower environment uh, you have a very different uh, integrations with third party uh, applications but when you go actually into the real production uh, the third party applications are real and live um, when you test in that scenario you would really see uh, how they are also influencing the overall performance of your application and at last uh, you have to reduce costs and how would this help us to reduce cost is uh, imagine a situation where you're actually um, not done any performance testing and uh, you had you started seeing performance issues so you have to immediately look into it rectify it redesign it or redevelop it in some scenarios and you have to retest it and deploy it back one it is going to be very time intensive uh, second thing is it's going to be really directly impacting your end customers the the time and effort is going to result in a increased cost so by proactively doing a performance testing in production and making sure system is efficient by eliminating any possibility of any uh, performance issues you are actually uh, in the broader picture reducing the cost associated with the overall software development so now let's look into how do we actually do this uh, performance testing in production uh, there are a couple of things you have to keep in mind. Uh, very first pointer is you have to plan ahead. Uh, when we say plan ahead, meaning you have to have the exact scenario which you're going to test and you have to identify a slot where the actual use of the application is really low. You have to communicate to the relevant uh, teams and also production monitoring team. Uh, the objectives has to be clearly well established. Uh, you have to identify the specific performance issues that you hope to address. Um, could be hypothetical or could be something uh, you started seeing in production. And also uh, detailing about how this testing is going to go uh, from the plan perspective and the expectations perspective um, and what will be the right time to do this. So planning is the key. You have to plan ahead and plan well next point you have to keep in mind is understanding your production environment um, as we were just talking about it the environment even though it's it's apple to apple in terms of the hardware and the configuration it still have a difference to the actual production to any other lower environment so it's really important to understand uh, how your production environment is built infrastructure network firewall sometimes you may have the firewall disabled in your lower environment uh, but actually in production that is much more secure um, so you have to identify all this production uh, environment level changes um, so that you can take the necessary precaution for for your testing practice the next point is to use more realistic data um, testing with the hypothetical or uh, creating a mock-up data in your lower environment where you have less combinations the results might be different uh, than the actual testing itself so when you go to production you have to be really careful about the amount of test data you're creating um, obviously you will not be able to use the real data which is uh, available in production so you have to come up with a plan how this test data will be created, how it will be secluded from any other data. Once the data is utilized, your execution is completed, 
what all tables and the information it is impacting and adding an additional um, set of entries so that you can delete them or make sure only those are deleted later. So this is going to be a very crucial part, honestly, um, to make sure how your data is getting created, executed and um, completely deleted from the environment once the test is over. And the next point would be to make sure you have a very strong monitoring and profiling tools in, in production because uh, while you're running the test, it's, it's crucial to make sure your environment is running at the right uh, pace so it is not giving you any performance issues. Uh, if you have a strong monitoring and profiling in place, you, you will be able to identify any indications which comes your way so that you can take a, a action ahead of time and also to identifying the bottleneck and performance issue. Uh, it is very important to have a very strong monitoring and profiling tool so that uh, you will be able to track the, the exact issues and uh, come up with the performance fixes later. And at last, you have to keep in mind uh, the testing practice is not uh, be done only once. The idea behind this is to make sure you are continuously testing them in production and optimizing them and so that you are building much more resilient uh, application as a whole and, and also increasing the stakeholder confidence. So it is going to be a more frequent or a regular testing practice, which needs to be communicated to uh, the relevant teams and has to be included as part of the development process as a whole. As you can see, theoretically, it looks um, simple and straightforward. You have to make sure a couple of things and you can start running the uh, performance test in production. But if you do one wrong move, it is going to directly impact the production and the live users. So you do not want to be in that situation. So whatever precautions you take in the regular performance testing, you have to take at least five times or 10 times more precaution and make sure this is done in a very controlled manner. So now let's look into how we can design this better. Uh, what are the things we have to keep in mind while designing the uh, performance testing in production? As a rule of thumb, there are few kind of performance testing you can do. Uh, there are few kind of performance testing you should definitely avoid. To start with, incremental load test is what you need to uh, target because um, even though you have an expected load to be tested on the system, you don't want to straight away do that um, directly. So you need to have a plan to incrementally uh, have this load injected into the system so you can monitor and see how the system is behaving. And if there is any uh, need for you to stop the test for, for any issues so that you can take that action. And uh, if there are any new features which are being released, uh, which needs to be tested, uh, that is one, one of the uh, good scenarios for you to performance test the new feature directly on production. And the third part is targeted load test. Uh, when we say targeted, you need to have a definite target of load which needs to be tested. Um, it shouldn't be uh, going way beyond what current production load is after doing the load analysis. Um, a very specific targeted load test is something you can plan for. So there are some types of tests which you shouldn't do at all. One is a stress test because you do not want to stress the actual production system and uh, try to uh, record the statistics that might uh, impact your application negatively and extended load test um, you have a very precise ideally one hour window of load testing um, do not go beyond do not go way beyond and do an extended load test which might hamper your application as a whole and the more uh, duration you do those many requests will be created those many data will be used you, you will have a lot more issues uh, getting rid of those excess data which is uh, created by your test and spike test is one more uh, such scenario where you don't want to uh, increment the load spike it from nowhere to see the system behavior so these are the tests you can avoid uh, focus more on incremental slow and targeted load tests so that you can get a, a understanding of your performance behavior in production so now let's look at how to design uh, the effective test. So there are some pointers which we, which I would like to mention here is um, start by identifying the crucial functionalities and use cases. Um, 
introduction when you go you don't want to test each and everything for performance and uh, overwhelm it so there will be some crucial or critical functionalities which you can take uh, initially for your testing purpose and all the scenarios um, needs to be properly defined and the use cases should be created and uh, you have to come up with a plan where you mention the expected performance um, of these functionalities and have much more realistic performance goals uh, again this is the environment where you are testing to ensure performance stability um, you don't want to have an unrealistic goals and try to meet them and uh, data is a crucial part um, so you have to simulate have a data which is like production and uh, that that's going to be forming a base of your testing uh, response time you're going to get and how the how you can certify the performance stability of your application um test them under a different load uh, again it's an incremental load um once you are comfortable tested that and uh, you're confident then you can go and uh, try a different uh, combinations and concurrencies um monitor and measure the key performance indicators take a note of all the kpis during your execution um do analyze the result and identify the bottlenecks and compare it back to your performance testing which you did in a lower environment that will give you a good analysis of um, how much uh, closer to the real performance of production you are testing in your lower environment or you are completely off of if there is any need for you to re-simulate uh, the environment or the parameters to make it much more closer to production and uh, make this a continuous testing process um, so that you can keep optimizing the performance in production so in conclusion performance testing in production is a very crucial uh, part of ensuring the stability of the application but it is very difficult and and it is not the easiest uh, performance testing practice uh, only the skilled uh, professional should be trying this out if you have not done this um, then it's a good time to have a conversation regarding this with your team and stakeholders and try to emphasize on the importance of doing it in production you can start by doing that for a very small uh, targeted area and slowly you can ramp up and have this as part of a regular practice um, i hope this session was of good use for you uh, we are purposefully keeping these sessions for only 15 to 20 minutes idea is to uh, bring in new concepts to you and uh, treat it more like a food for thought uh, here is my linkedin handle and also uh, the link for american association of id professionals um, please do uh, send me a request or join uh, join us there in aitp uh, so until we meet next time uh, thank you so much we're doing one more session in february on the analysis of the performance report how you can communicate that to the non-technical stakeholders, uh, please do sign up for that. So we will meet again next time. Thank you.